Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. Last year I made a video on how to photograph the Kestrel and once I put it up on YouTube I had a message from one of my subscribers could I do a video on Sparrowhawk and I thought to myself do you know what that's a real challenge so welcome to the challenge and welcome to this uh, video on how to photograph a Sparrowhawk so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you how to identify the Sparrowhawk where you can find Sparrowhawk we'll look at the Sparrowhawk's lifestyle and its behaviour and then I'll share with you my approach to photographing the Sparrowhawk and I'll give you some top tips along the way. So let's go and find the Sparrowhawk. So how do we actually identify the Sparrowhawk? Well, it's not as easy as some people think it is. Uh, and it really hasn't been until I've done this project that um, I can now fully understand the difference between male and female. And that's what we'll look at now. When we look at the male Sparrowhawk, he's got bright yellow eyes. The upper parts of his body are grey. He's got bright yellow legs. On the front of his body, the bird stripes are more of an orangey red type colour. His beak is black, it's got a black tip with it and, and it's yellow. And it's about the, the, the male sparrow is about the size of a collar dove. When it comes to the, the female sparrowhawk, again she has bright yellow eyes, it's an absolutely stunning feature on the, the sparrowhawk. The upper parts of the female are brown in colour. The bad feathers on the chest are brown. They're not orange or an orangey red colour. They're brown. Again, she's got yellow legs. Again, the beak is yellow with a black tip. And one identifying feature to really note is that on the females, the more mature they get, they have a bright white stripe above their eye. And that can be a right distinguishing feature of a female sparrowhawk. And the female sparrowhawk is about the size of a wood pigeon. To tell the difference between a male and female sparrowhawk, to summarise it, is, is that the male sparrowhawk has grey upper parts and orange bad feathers, whereas the female has brown upper parts to the body and brown bad feathers. And again, emphasise the white stripe above the female's eye can be distinctive. And females are about 25% larger than the male. So what I want to do now is just give you a little test. Um, you get six seconds to see if you can identify the difference between the male and the female sparrowhawk in this picture. And I'm sure that you can see from the, the answers that I keep emphasizing it that that yellow stripe, sorry, white stripe above the female's eye is a distinctive feature. When it comes to the Sparrowhawk's call, um, both the male and the female are relatively quiet outside of the breeding season, um, which is normally late April, May, and goes onwards up until July. Um, that's where the, the, the time of the year that you the really begin to, to vocalise that you'll be able to hear them. There are two calls and I'll show you them both. The first one is a normal like contact call and it's just a straightforward key, key, key and I'll play it now. Then the next call that we have is the alarm call and this is a more rapid sounding key 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 and again I'll play that now the sparrowhawk can often get confused with the kestrel especially in flight um, so to tell the difference between a kestrel and a sparrowhawk in flight is that the kestrel wings are more slender and they're more pointed Whereas the, the sparrowhawk's wings are blunted, the broad fingered at the end. The, the kestrel has like a, a fan shaped tail, whereas the tail on the sparrowhawk tends to be long and square and flat. So, where are we going to find 
the Sparrowhawk, the elusive Sparrowhawk, and they can be quite elusive um, to find. But if you know the right places, then you're on the right track. The main places that you'll find the, the Sparrowhawk is in woodland, you find them in parks, gardens, and anywhere where there's a feeder station set up that attracts small birds to feed, then the Sparrowhawk's going to be quite nearby. And that can often be your, your best opportunity to see a Sparrowhawk and to get the pictures that you're after. Um, nature reserves where um, small birds are fed are, are good places and you can also go to commercial um, photography hides where virtually the, the, they'll feed birds and uh, sparrowhawks will come in. The sparrowhawk is no different to the blackbird that eats a worm or the, the blue tit that eats a butterfly it's just that the sparrowhawk feeds on small birds so where small birds are you'll find the sparrowhawk and as I said Feeder stations are probably the most likely um, spot to find them, but it's pretty much a sit and wait game at feeder stations to, to get the opportunity to photograph the, the sparrow. But they will also be found over marshes and open areas, but the preferred habitat is certainly woodland. When it comes to the sparrowhawks diet, sparrowhawks are uh, excellent hunters the, of small birds. Um, the preferred method of attack is normally to sit on a perch, observe and then ambush the small birds that they're, they're after. They'll often attack at low level, changing direction very quickly and rapidly. It's amazing to watch, very difficult to photograph when they're doing that. Male sparrowhawks will mainly look to try and catch birds like finches, sparrows, uh, tits, birds like that, whereas the female 25% larger than the male can take birds up to the size of like a collared dove or even a wood pigeon. Once the sparrowhawk actually catches its prey what it will do it will actually pluck and feed on it straight away. If it's a larger type bird it will pluck, eat and then once the, the actual prey is of a size that's big enough if it can fly away with it it will fly away with it. Pluck feathers on the ground are a very good indicator that um, a sparrowhawk has actually made a kill. What you're looking for is actually the whole feather. If you've got a whole feather, which has been it's an indication that the, uh, a bird's been plucked by a bird of prey. Whereas if, a, if it was a fox, what a fox will do will actually rip the feathers out and they'll be crushed. And that's the way to tell the difference. Sparrowhawks often have their own favorite um, perches, which they'll, they'll fly to with a prey and then pluck them. Um, during the breeding season, the male sparrow will do all the hunting for the female and the chicks that are on the nest until they're old enough to leave. One behaviour to, to notice, which is common amongst birds of prey, uh, and, and I've seen it a number of times with uh, the sparrowhawk, is a, a behaviour called mantling. And what will happen is that once the, 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 the sparrowhawk has, has made its attack and it's, it's killing its prey, it will fold its wings over the top to try and hide its prey from other birds who could come along and steal it from them and that's called mantling. Okay what I want to do now is just take a little time out just to give you a look forward to another project that I'm working on at the moment um, which is just as big a challenge as photographing the, the, the sparrowhawk and that is the barn owl. So my concentration after this video is to try to go and find the barn owl and photograph it and share that experience and knowledge with you. So. Let's look forward to the bar now. So what's my approach to photographing sparrowhawk? Well, sparrowhawks are, are diurnal. They tend to um, do most of their hunting in the early morning and towards the latter part of the day when the smaller birds are going to roost and that's where they look to attack them. Um, sparrowhawks will perch, but you've got to prepare for them to fly off at any second. Um, and a good tip for um, birds of prey in general who are about to take off is that they will poop, as you can see in this photograph. Um, my go-to settings, and again it all depends on the light, but my go-to settings, because they can be very quick birds, is that once a bird lands, I'm looking at an aperture of 7.1, which is the widest on my RF 100-500. Shutter speed about 1 1,000th one of a second, and I always shoot in auto ISO. When it comes to the Sparrowhawk in flight, I'll open my aperture up, or sorry, I'll close my aperture down just slightly to f8. 
up my shutter speed to about one two thousandth of a second and again I always shoot in auto ISO. When it comes to equipment that I would recommend for photographing a Sparrowhawk you're looking for a, a telephoto lens minimum 300 up to about 500 millimeter. What you aim to do is if you get a Sparrowhawk land you want to try and get as many shots off as you can quickly at one thousandth of a second and then up your shutter speed to about two thousandths of a second in preparation for it taking off. At the same time if the light's not good enough and you're at one thousandth of a second get your record shots then lower your shutter speed if you're supported on a tripod or on a gimbal or on a beanbag and I can get my shutter speed down to about 250 of a second and what that will do is it will lower your ISO. Now for some top tips that I would um, recommend for photographing a Sparrowhawk. Tip number five is all about location. Sparrowhawks tend to have their own set patrol routes, um, known perches where they'll sit and they'll wait to ambush um, their prey from. As I've said, feeder stations are probably your best bet um, to, to, to see a Sparrowhawk and to get the opportunity to photograph one, but it's pretty much a sitting and waiting game. Tip number four is all about looking and listening. Looking for indicators like piles of feathers on the ground as I discussed earlier um, that have been plucked by the Sparrowhawk. Um, they have their favourite posts, uh, normally nearby um, nesting sites. <laughs> Birds at feeder stations, keep your eyes on the birds at feeder stations then all of a sudden if they just scatter or they hear a lamb and then scatter that can be a good indication that there's a bird of prey in the area and it possibly could be a sparrow, most likely to be a sparrow. Learn the um, sparrowhawk's call and it's a lamb call. As I said it's more this time of year, um, it's getting to mid-April, into May, June, that's when they're the most vocal during the breeding season. And also learn other alarm calls, especially the blackbird. I always find that the blackbird is the one that gives the game away, uh, especially at feeder stations. Okay, tip number three is all about observation. Um, get to know your local woodlands, go out and have a walk, have a little recce, have a look around. Places that you're looking for are open glides where the sparrow will often sit off to one side, perched up in a tree, and they'll actually ambush up and down those runs. So you're looking for likely um, good overwatch perches where a sparrowhawk could, could ambush from. Um, sparrowhawks tend to use the same nesting areas year in year out uh, and they're not far away from the patrol routes. They often, the, the nests, nests normally sit inside the wood about up to about 10 metres where the sparrowhawk can still have a, a good view of what's going on uh, around it. So observation tip number three. Tip number two it's all about Betty Davis eyes as Kim Carn said. <laughs> it's focus on the eyes. There's a saying eyes like a hawk and the eyes on the sparrowhawk are absolutely stunning uh, and they need to be the focus of your attention um, when you, you're taking your photographs. Modern day eye detection on your cameras it will absolutely hit the Sparrowhawk's eye immediately because the eye is so stunning and so bright. That takes it to tip number one and it's all about patience. Um, if there's one bird that requires a lot of patience and perseverance to photograph it's the Sparrowhawk. You don't have to dress up like an SAS sniper but I would advise that you wear drab coloured clothing you need to have the patience of the Sparrowhawk. A Sparrowhawk only makes one kill in 10 attempts. So you need to have the patience and the perseverance of a Sparrowhawk to photograph them.
Okay, thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph a sparrowhawk. Um, I'm sure you can see how much of a challenge it is. They're very elusive birds, they're quite difficult to get near to, to photograph, but if you take the right approach and you know where to go, then you should get the images that you're after. All I would just ask is that if you've liked this video, could you hit the like button? Could I also ask you to consider subscribing to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, it doesn't cost anything, and it just helps me to grow my channel and share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So, until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.